I think most students and instructors are familiar with a lecture-based class. I know I had plenty of courses that were taught in this way. A lot of my classes are lecture-based and they're not very interactive. All of the classes kind of have the same structure where the teacher gives a presentation, they'll say, does anyone have an, any questions? And then they'll move on to the next topic. There's not as much built-in time for conversation and discussion with your classmates. And if it is, it's often directly talking with the professor instead of talking with your classmates. There are benefits to this style, but also a number of drawbacks. A big one that I see is how students might have a really interesting idea or thought, but sharing in front of everyone can be daunting, especially if you're not sure how it'll go over. Also, you don't necessarily want to interrupt the flow of the professor. A lecture typically has a distinct beginning, middle, and ending, and you need to get all of the pieces. Dr. Baird's class is a little bit different. So I really appreciate that about the structure of this class. Like, we have time every single day, at least once a class, yeah. to share our thoughts and ideas and bounce ideas off of the people we're sitting next to. So, yeah. It's definitely unique. I think it, one of my favorite parts is how it's, it's, to me, a perfect combination in terms of participation because a lot of times it's either kind of like an all-or-nothing thing where a teacher will try and, you know, pinpoint and catch people off guard and say, hey, you, like, what are we doing? But, like, for here... If you have something meaningful to say, even if it's not meaningful, but you think it's meaningful, you can say it, <laughs> and people do that all the time, and they only contribute if they really want to. There's no pressure. It's not part of your grade at all, and I think that's a very unique thing, not having participation as part of a grade, but as your own personal incentive, because what you want to do, that's unique to me. There are still moments of traditional lecture and presentation, but the bulk of the class time is spent with groups sharing their findings with each other and asking questions. It's really fun to TA with Tim, with his style of teaching. It's not just, I'm gonna go in there and lecture and have a PowerPoint and students are gonna take a test on this material. It's really fun and challenging to help teach some of the concepts when it's participatory like that and so interactive with students. I should say, class time isn't just spent repeating the task of filling out the takeaway. Instead, the students talk about areas of the readings they struggled with, why they found them challenging and confusing, and their classmates would offer strategies and suggestions for finding answers on future assignments. For questions that ask them to connect the course content to their own lives or other areas of the course, the students would often find different connections and would then discuss which ones were weaker or stronger, where connections made sense and where they didn't. Once conversation began to die down, Dr. Baird would bring everyone together and students could share thoughts from their table. This is a similar environment to sharing in a lecture, but group members would often support each other in sharing their particularly interesting ideas. Yeah, I would say the, the hardest thing about the takeaways is there are not a lot of people who want to share. Like, give me your most profound thought and people feel from this reading and people feel like they have to have a really well put together thought. And I think that's kind of intimidating. But I think it's better when we are in our own groups first and then we share like our group's takeaway because we have time to bounce ideas off each other. Kind of mold it into something better. Right. Yeah, like I, I try to like to keep it quality, not quantity, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of this makes class feel more spontaneous, although Dr. Baird supported that himself with his choice of materials to present in class. Some of them would seem very disparate, and yet there were connections to be found. You need the right amount of disruption. And it doesn't, I don't want it to fit seamlessly either. I want that, that fulcrum to be kind of jarring, like, all right, now we're, now we're listening to a podcast. For me, they dovetail really well. A lot of times with disruption, we like, our wheels turn. We become critical thinkers. We try to make sense of it. We try to process it. Well, why, why is he doing that? Like yesterday in class, why, why is he showing Mad Max alongside a documentary about a farmer? Like, why did we go from farmer documentary to Mad Max? I have a good answer for that. I want to see if they can come up with an answer. It's easy to assume that students will prefer a more passive experience where they just have to take in information and then give it back. 
but I didn't find this to be true. Students talked about the format of the class, how there was experimentation with different readings and teaching styles and course content. They responded to it and seemed to appreciate it. <laughs> and um, it's, it's fortunate, I guess, for us, but um, it certainly makes it much more enjoyable for a class. Like yeah. the, the small group thing, I feel like it'd be miserable if we didn't have the same chemistry. Yeah. It'd be like maybe one person talking and everyone's just like looking down at their laptops and like, oh, well, tried. <laughs> yeah. So. And I think we're lucky that our class is structured the way it is so that we did have the opportunity to be mm -hmm. in a group. Because I think about like if our table was sitting in one of those lecture halls where it's just like, oh, you yeah. know, the seats one mm -hmm. right next to each other and we all sat in like several rows. I feel like we would not have that connection, and that's really sad. So we can see the benefits of structuring a class to allow for active participatory learning. How then can a classroom be structured to support the same type of learning? The new classroom building scale-up rooms are unique spaces, and we'll talk about them in our next video. Until then, this is Seeking Sustainability, an active learning story.